Bloodstock 2013, and we're here with a very special guest of the festival, Eric from Watain. How's it going, sir? Fine, thank you. And it's uh, it's unusual to see you at a festival where you're not actually playing. Is, it, is this a slightly weird experience for you? My life is one long weird experience. But, uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's actually pretty good. I mean, good to be able to combine business and pleasure sure. <laughs> kind of and yesterday's lineup was amazing you know it's it's a good place to come here and do press because there's a lot of other stuff going on at sure. the time. and uh, who are you who are you most looking forward to last night one name kind of like jumps out i suppose i mean seeing voivod accept and king diamond in a row was pretty that was good sure but and king diamond especially i would say i think it's yeah. my 13th time seeing him really so yeah. that's strange because for a lot of people in the uk of course it was the first time because he hasn't been here in quite a while so uh, so how does that rank at the in the great king diamond shows actually very high i mean it's he's one of those artists that gets better and better and i really like that he you know unlike so many other like bigger bands from the 80s that are still around he actually still puts an effort into the show and you know the actual experience of it all and uh, it works you know he really pulls it off still like, it's amazing sure and uh, one side of what i guess that people don't know so well is that i mean you confess yourself to uh, not just a black metal fan but a metal head i mean is that a, an accurate description yeah i suppose so i mean it's been a very central part of my life since a very young age. So what kind of metal when you're not listening to you know the, the black metal bands we've heard you talk about in the past? What what are the, the albums that are on your stereo? What's the classic bands for you? I mean to me it's it's always been about you know Rainbow Metallica, Maiden, DU I mean of course, you know, that's kind of what got me into all of this in the first place. And I've always been, you know, a bit of a I, I always try to dig really deep when it comes to those kind of things. So, I mean, my record collection, I suppose, covers pretty much everything from, I don't know, old 70s to rock music to, to Bathory. I mean, it's, you got to keep an, an open mind when you're, when, you're, when you're looking for diabolical things in music, because those, those energies that, I mean, that, that are very, like, predominant in black metal, I can feel them and, and see them and sense them in so much other music as well. And to me that's like one of the impor important things like with, with being into this kind of music is always to dig deep and try to find that like diabolical nerve, be it in, you know, candle mass or destruction. I mean, it, it's, it's there, it's always there somewhere. Sure. I mean, it's obviously much more hidden in some bands than others. I mean, you just probably can't see this on the camera, but there's an Iron Maiden badge on your, your jacket. How, where's the diabolical side to Iron Maiden? Well, I mean, someone once said, and I think that's a kind of good way of looking at it, is that like the only difference between a heavy metal band like Iron Maiden and a black metal band is that the black metal band is open about advocating the devil, being a mouthpiece for for satanic energies while the heavy metal bands try to hide it, you know, but it's all the same. Sure. It's in the end, in the, in the end, you know, looking at it from a certain angle, it all comes from the same source. Sure. And uh, what about some of the, the bands that are playing this weekend? Where's this, the diabolic side of Avantasia, for example? I, I mean, that's the thing. There are a lot of bands that are, to me, just like blank sheets of paper. I cannot comment on that band because I never heard them, but I mean, I, I still think that there's a... Uh, 20% of all the heavy metal that is around that I actually genuinely appreciate because of those reasons that I was talking about. Sure. The rest doesn't really grab my attention. Sure. And uh, in terms of uh, you know the great festival performances, not just King Diamond as we spoke about earlier, but uh, in general, what are some of the, the best shows you've seen? Because we've seen some great ones here and we were wondering, you know, what are your great ones? <coughs> you mean this year or? It, that you've ever been to. Wow. Well, seeing Metallica <coughs> for the first time in 1993, I think, still thinks ranks as one of the best concerts I've ever seen. Uh, seeing Dissection 37 nights in a row when we were touring with them was another thing that I'll obviously never forget. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's been so much, you know, touring. I mean, especially touring, and when you get when you get to 
kind of delve deeper into the nature of, of, of the band in a live context, like doing that with bands like In Solitude or The Devil's Blood on the US tour we did last year has been like very rewarding and really inspiring as well, you know, because those are bands that after you've seen them a few times, you kind of just take a step back and like, okay, yeah. this is something else. And yeah, that's that has been so much so much good concert experiences. Sure. And uh, one question that we're asking to everyone this weekend is, we had uh, the Thursday night was headlined by uh, a band called Tragedy, who were playing cover versions of Beatles songs, uh, Beatles, Bee Gees songs, incredibly badly. What would your heavy metal covers band be? I mean, we did, uh, we already did our Bathory tribute, yeah. which was, um, which worked really well. Yeah. I mean, that felt like a very natural thing to do. I think when it comes to like more traditional heavy metal, it's very hard to say. We rehearsed, we always rehearsed like a few Metallica songs, all the Metallica songs that they kind of work, but I, I, I'm not sure if I would like to do that in, you know, in a, yeah. like a public context. But there's, there's a lot of good stuff that can be done still, and we have, there's always a lot of weird ideas brewing in this band, so we'll see. Sure. And uh, uh, there's uh, a lot of talk about reunions at the moment. Obviously, last week uh, Emperor was re announced to be reuniting. What what reformations should never happen? What bands are there that are split up that should never come back? Well, I would say like half of all the ones that already happened, unfortunately. I mean, there are. I mean, sure, there's one thing of hearing all those old songs live on stage again, that's great, you know, but there are some bands that are just a bit too obvious, not really there anymore, you know. Yeah. But to take like the perfect example of a good reunion, like the Celtic Frost reunion, yeah. to me was a really, like one of, of dignity, you know, that, that really made an impact and they, they continued on what they were doing. I was really happy when Amoebics got back together and, and, yeah. and we did new stuff as well. I never got to see them live. But you know, on the other hand, there are so many bands that she just maybe just go home. <laughs> Should stay dead. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's it easily gets kind of embarrassing, especially yeah. when it's bands that you know, are rooted in a very passionate foundation. You know, they come from a place or an environment that was very fiery and you know like filled with with with, with a with, with, with a very strong emotional thing and then they come back and they just don't have that anymore it's just a bit sad but on the other hand i mean i'm still really glad that i can see bands still like you know guns and roses or metallica even or yeah of yeah. course made and king diamond i mean you know there, there there's two sides to that coin but in general i think you know most of those bands should think a little bit more about getting back together because yeah, it easily gets, it easily turns out a bit awkward, I think.